friends, here we are. It's Advent 4, the season of joy. And this is a day where, for many of us, we're probably really digging deep to find where that joy is. So I hope on this day, as we gather, that we do dig deep to find those places of peace, love, hope, and joy. So let us begin our time together today with our opening hymn. And I forget, oh, come all ye faithful. I greet you in the name of God, love incarnate, spirit of life. May hope, peace, joy, and love be with you all. Good morning. Well, I'm, I'm so glad to see, to see you here today. It's, um, it's a little bit of a different day, and I've, I have a number of announcements, as you can probably guess. So the first thing is that uh, council has decided that this will be the last in-person service for a number of weeks. We're going to reevaluate in January and hopefully then we'll have some more ideas, more information from the government. There'll be more data that comes in around Omicron and more people will be able to get their boosters as well. So this will be our last in-person for, for a few weeks at least. We do have a wonderful Christmas Eve service that was recorded on Thursday. The, the choir, we had multiple readers, people that we haven't seen for some time, so it'll be a real treat whenever you watch it and you're like, oh my gosh, I haven't seen them in, in such a long time. Um, we had uh, Ghislaine Marceau, who does, um, sang a, a solo of O Holy Night. I'm giving away all the good bits. I should really just wait for you to watch it. But it'll be posted sometime on Christmas Eve day. So I really hope that you enjoy that um, as well. Because, And there's just so much music. It just sounds amazing. So there's also some things we're going to postpone for the time being. So, for example, after the church service today was going to be the Christmas marketplace in the hall. That is postponed. And Leona and Debbie will have some more information in the coming week about that, I'm sure. Uh, prayer circle, which was scheduled for tomorrow. I'll send out a Zoom link. So if anybody would like to be part of prayer circle, or even if you'd like to find out more about it, just let me know. Send me an email and I can let you know and also send you a link for that. As well, Bible in the pews. We're not going to have that today, but you, it's been really um, a success. That was one of the suggestions that came out of our visioning process of having Bible study after the worship service right here. And I, I think it's been really interesting and enriching, so it is definitely something that we are going to do again in, in the coming year. 
Let's see. What else? And one other thing I just wanted to draw your attention to is that there's going to be a blue Christmas solstice service this Tuesday night, also on Zoom. And In Life and Work is the link for that. So that's on Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. So, here we are. I know that many of you have probably come or at listening, are listening at home with a heavy heart. We've listened to the experts, we have heard the concerns of family members, and we have made choices that we didn't think that we would need to make again this year. For some, the hopes of a normal Christmas are disappearing, and the thought of what Christmas might look like is not one that any of us would have dreamed about a few short months or even weeks ago. But in the midst of the uncertainty, know this, love, hope, joy and peace can be experienced this Christmas season. We can experience the love of family and friends via phone calls and Zoom links, Christmas cards and door drop-offs. We can find joy in the simple things of life, the, the birds singing outside of our window, the marvel of snowflakes on our windows, and the sound of Christmas music on our TVs and iPads. We can find peace in the knowledge that by staying home, and by making sometimes hard choices, we could be saving a life, our own, someone in our family, or even that of our neighbor. And while hope has certainly got our work out this past two years, it is still with us. Hope in that we will get through this too as well. Hope that God is still with us, still being born into a time of trial and judgment chaos and uncertainty. In many ways, this Christmas is a lot like that first one. Both are messy, not the way that we had hoped, and we are not in the place that we thought we would be. But even in the midst of all that, we find the gifts of the season. Hope, peace, love, and yes, joy. We are a church. We are a family. Wherever the next few weeks or months will take us, we are together, stronger because we have stood together, stronger because we have been tested, and stronger because we know that we do not walk alone. Thanks be to God, and may it be so. Let us begin our worship with our call to worship. Suddenly the heavens are alive with music, song, and voices. The streets of Bethlehem also are filled with noise, people, and animals. Where have all these people come from? And where are they going? Do they really know what is coming? Do any of us know? What will happen in Bethlehem this year Every year will change everything again. Oh, how we want to open our hearts to the promise of God, embracing the promise of love, the promise of joy, the promise of peace. But it is hard. But it is hard to experience. And yet we come. We come to worship with seeking, searching hearts. Friends, let us pray. God of wonder and awe, we wait in eager anticipation for the arrival of our newborn king. Fan the flames of the fire within our hearts that we will remain steadfast in our hope in you. Our hearts are longing for what only you can satisfy. Let us experience, O oh God, the glory of your appearing. Come quickly, Lord. Come quickly, we pray. Amen.
We are getting tired of waiting, of preparing, of marking time, yet we come. Yes, we need perspective, the bigger picture of faith, along with the desire for clear directions for the road ahead. We long for what might yet be, yearning to know what this waiting is purposeful. We come anxious in our uncertainty, seeking color in our lives, which too often feel monotone. We struggle to figure out how to make this Christmas one to remember fondly, instead of remembering it as the season of our discontent. We come in expectation of good, word, of good news. As we come, let us open ourselves to the, shine of, to the shining of the light of the world. one community of faith and prayer. That's what begins, isn't it, God? New life filled with new possibilities. Tell us the story once again, that we may grow anew into your resurrection. Hope arising from dread, peace blossoming from conflict, joy bubbling from despair, and love transforming polarization. Strengthen us to welcome your mission of daring and of risk. To something enforced or coerced, but created within a life of daunting through generous of giving. Amen. Joseph went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to be delivered, her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood be before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good no news of great joy to all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find the child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. 
And suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them. May God's wisdom bless our understanding of the word. With, With God's wisdom, help, help, may it be so. to be out of his basket. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, so, here, oh, this is a comfy chair. So, today was supposed to be a drama, and we had all sorts of people lined up to be in costumes, and I know Felix and Wesley were going to be, what were you going to be again, wise men? Okay, wise men, yes. But we decided to change things up a little bit. Um, what's that? You glad you picked this Sunday to come? Why is that? All the cookies that are there? Oh, you can't eat those right now until you've had your lunch. That's right. So, today I'm going to uh, read a story, and this is the story that we would have done our drama on today. And it's a story called Samuel's Perfect Gift. And it's a story that I actually wrote in 2013. And it's been performed once, and this would have been the second time. What's that? What, what's, what's, what's wrong? What's that? You don't see any pictures. <laughs> well, oh, Ice Cube, you know, you have to paint the pictures in your mind. You have to use your imagination. That's right. Okay. So, do any of you know about a tradition from Iceland where on Christmas Eve people give books? Have you heard about this? It's been going around Facebook. Of course, where do people get their information? But Facebook, right? Yeah. <laughs> so there's a tradition that you get books on Christmas Eve and you unwrap them and you stay up as long as you need to in order to finish the book. And this apparently has been going on because I did my research, yes, um, since World War II because paper was one of the things that there was no, they weren't, it wasn't rationed. So there was still able to be books. And um, another thing about stories is that 
there's a tradition, a Jewish tradition called Midrash. I think you want the story. Okay, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Okay. So Midrash means to search. And Jewish rabbis would make up these stories, these, in order to tell a, a lesson, like a Bible lesson, they would make up a mythical story around stories that were in the Bible. So in a way, this is kind of in that tradition, Midrash. That's right. What's that? No, I'm not showing off my Hebrew. When I took it in class, it went in one ear and out the other. That's right. Yes. Okay. Once again, I had to Google that. Okay. So, is everyone ready for the story? Okay. All right. <laughs> well, I have a captive audience, right? That's right. Okay. All right. So, here we go. You have to paint the picture in your mind. Okay? So, once upon a time, there was a thoughtful little boy named Samuel. Samuel lived in a little village in the countryside of Judea. Even though he was a young boy, he would sometimes work with his father in the family's woodworking shop. In the shop, Samuel's father made wooden bowls, tables, and fishing boats for the villagers. Samuel liked to carve, fig liked to carve figurines out of wood. He would spend hours making a donkey or a dove that looked like it would come alive at any moment. One day, Samuel was in his workshop with his father when some very strange-looking people came in. They were tall, dressed in fine clothes, the likes of which Samuel had never seen before. There seemed to be a mystery about them, and they moved, when they moved their robes, there seemed to be a scent of a faraway land. Samuel was a little afraid, and he hid under the table. The stranger said they were looking for a beautiful carved box, something that was extra special so they could put a present in it for a new king that they were going to visit. A new king, exclaimed Samuel, but we already have an old one. The strangers all laughed and they explained to Samuel that they were on a long journey. They were following a star that had appeared in the sky. Samuel's father went back to the shop and pulled on the box that Samuel had seen him working on for a very long time. It had deeply carved wood with silver inlay inside, and inside there was a rich purple cloth. Samuel thought it was the most beautiful thing he'd ever seen in his young life. The strangers nodded their head in unison and said, Perfect, that will do nicely. We'll take it. They paid his father and they went away on their camels. The strangers had no longer left the shop. When down the road, Samuel heard a big ruckus outside his window. He heard the baaing of sheep and the calls of the shepherds and the barking of sheepdogs. What are they doing in town, thought Samuel. They never come down into town. They always stay out in the field tending their sheep. Something must be wrong if all of them are in town. With that, the door to the woodshop banged open and in rushed sheep and dogs and shepherds. Samuel's father was a good businessman, so instead of shooing the flock of animals out of the store, he just said, how can I help you today? <laughs> One of the tired shepherds wiped his brow and said, oh, we've been on a journey for many days with our sheep. The way has been dangerous, so I've had to save a, a few sheep from danger. I broke my crook, crook the other day, and I really need a new strong one for the rest of my journey. Samuel's father started at once to work on a long piece of wood. Been traveling, have you? Seems like a lot of people are doing that lately. Where are you headed? The shepherd looked around sheepishly and leaned in to share a secret. Samuel leaned in too to listen. About three nights ago, my brothers and I were out in the field when the sky filled with angels. I can almost picture that, said Samuel. There we were. It was cold and we were huddled around our little fire when we heard angels singing. They said that a baby was going to be born that, we, that would be called the Wonderful Ruler, King of Peace and Son of God. They told us to follow the star until it stopped over, over the place where he was. We have been following the star for three days. When we get there, we'll give him a lamb from our own flock. Samuel's father had finished the crook. 
The shepherd smiled at the craftsmanship, then paid the carpenter and took his flock out the door, leaving the wood shop smelling like a barn. <laughs> that night, Samuel thought about the wise travelers and the shepherds and wondered about their journey to find their new king. Samuel wished he knew how to find this new king, but even if he did, he, he didn't know what he would give him. As he slept, Samuel had a dream. A dream that an angel came into his room, stood by his window, and pointed to a bright star in the night sky. The angel said, give the new king something that comes from your heart, Samuel. Give, give him a gift that means something to you. With that, the angel disappeared, and suddenly Samuel woke up. He got up and looked out the window, and there it was, the star. Samuel went back to his bed and pulled something out from underneath it. In his hand, he held a carving of a rooster. It was the best rooster, the best animal that he had ever carved. He looked at it every day and thought it was the best thing that he had ever done. As he looked at it, he realized that this was the present that he was going to give the new king. Here was a gift that he had worked on night after night. It was a gift that he loved. It was a gift that he had made with his own hands. Samuel tucked the carving under his arm, crept to the kitchen, snuck a piece of cheese and bread, and made his way out into the last few hours of night. He began to walk in the direction the shepherds and wise men had traveled, always keeping the star in sight. After a few hours, he came to a little town called Bethlehem. The star had stopped moving over the town. He wondered where he should look first. He looked down the street and saw a building that was bright with light pouring out the windows into the dark street. He knocked on the door. The door opened slightly and a kerchief-tied head was thrust out through the opening into the night and said, Yes? Excuse me, ma'am, said Samuel. I'm looking for the new king that has been born around here. Would you know where I can find him? A king? Born around here? Well, I do run a pretty good place, but a king? Born here? Well, if he was, I can start charging people extra to stay at a place where a king was born. So he was born here then, Samuel asked hopefully. Nah, sorry kid, the innkeeper said. I haven't had any room here for the last week. The last people that showed, showed up, I told them that there was a room in the back. I should have charged them more because it seems like more and more people just keep showing up. And with that, the door slammed in Samuel's face and he was left alone once again in the dark street. He started to make his way back the way he had come when he heard the sound of sheep and camels coming from down the alley. As he got closer, he could see the wise men and the shepherds and the beautiful angels in the sky all around a young couple. Everyone's attention was on a little baby, a baby wrapped in pieces of frayed old material. This must be the baby that everyone was talking about, thought Samuel. For all around the baby, he could see the gifts that he had already been given. Samuel kept crept closer to the baby, and he held the rooster up for the baby king to see. Samuel would say for years later that he thought that the baby smiled at him. At him! From head to toe, Samuel felt like butterflies were inside of him. And when he thought about it later, he would say that it felt like love had filled him up so much, it felt like it was making him dizzy. At that moment, he knew that he didn't have worried what gift, what he gave as a gift to the baby king. For as long as the gift came from his heart, that is all this king could ever have wanted. The best gift is one given in love. Here ends the story of Samuel's perfect gift. What's that? You want to say Merry Christmas? Okay. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And no, no cookies yet. No cookies yet. Aww. Okay. Oh. <laughs>
This month of December has been designated Chaplaincy Month here at Barhaven United. During Advent, we have been lifted up, lift, we've been lifting up the important work of our three outreach chaplaincy partners through the bulletin board displays in the narthex, notes in life and work, and at various times in our worship service as well. If you feel called to financially support the work of these chaplaincy partners, details are included in life and work regarding the various ways you can make an offering. And please note that if you're planning to drop an offer offering through the mail slot at the church, the deadline for doing so is this Tuesday, December 28th. This week, we focus on the work of Center 507, a community drop-in center that operates in the downtown area. In the video that we are about to see, Executive Director Richard LeBlanc describes what life, what life has been like for their community during the pandemic and how Centre 507 has changed their operations to meet the current needs of their community members. Let us watch. Good, uh, good morning, Barhaven United. I wanted to thank you for giving me the opportunity to send you uh, this video. Uh, I wanted to apologize for the delay. Uh, things were rolling along in my life, but my daughter and wife had a, a high-risk contact at a ringette game, so we've been isolating uh, here at home for the last few days. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Richard LeBlanc. I've been the executive director of Centre 507 for about eight years, but I've been employed there for about 15 years. Uh, Pre-COVID, I used to enjoy stopping by uh, your congregation for worship around Christmas time, but you know these are these are definitely different times. Um, Centre 507 uh, is doing well. Um, we are a very different agency than we were two years ago. Um, we were considered essential very quick by the City of Ottawa, and we're able to continue our services. Um, throughout the whole pandemic. Um, we are still serving uh, up to 150 people a day. It just looks a bit different. Uh, we're offering food to go uh, to many people uh, and we only allow 15 people to eat inside um, at one time. Um, but things are going, uh, you know, things are going well. Um, you know, I think uh, when I think about Centre 507 and COVID, it was very evident uh, right away that uh, a lot of people were congregated on the streets and had nowhere to go when everything closed down. Um, you know, all of us at Centre 507 were really worried about the Centre Town residents who were, you know, struggling with inadequate income, struggling with food security. Um, they didn't have access to transportation. Um, and then really, they, all the hardships people were experiencing were, were increased during the pandemic. So it was very important that 507 uh, has and is still doing today, uh, finding everything we can do you know, to help address these needs in our community. Um, you know, it's, it's really all about, uh, you know, improving people's lives and improving outcomes for people living downtown. And you know, it, it starts with opening our doors. And I think uh, with Centre 507, throughout the whole pandemic, throughout all the ups and downs, uh, you know, we, we had to find a way to keep opening our doors and keep allowing people in. Um, and I think the staff team and, and the volunteers have done a phenomenal job. Uh, it's a bit different, right? We have people running around wearing masks, um, you know, everyone's wearing visors, but we, we were really doing an amazing job to, to keep our staff and our volunteer team safe. Um, you know, Center 507, you know, we're still offering uh, referrals to every agency in the city, uh, referring people to the psychiatric outreach team, to Housing Health, to Center Town Community Health Center. But we've really had to, um, uh, we really have to change, you know, now we're offering things like, uh, you know, COVID testing, uh, we're offering um, hygiene products, uh, you know, things that you take, take for granted that I take for granted, right? We're trying to give people masks, hand sanitizers, um, you know, all those sort of COVID safe uh, hygiene supplies that we never thought of before. Um, Center 507, uh, you know, we're, we're excited uh, sort of to announce that in January, we will be opened up uh, an additional three evenings a week from January through March. Um, just to, um, you know, to give people downtown somewhere to go in the evenings, you know, it is looking like, it is looking like Ottawa is going to have to revert back to more restrictions. Um, and, you know, when people who are struggling with low income or have nowhere to live, have nowhere to go, um, you know, that's why it's, you know, really important for an agency like Centre 507 to have our doors open. And so we're going to be adding an additional 16 hours a week, uh, Monday, Wednesday and Thursday evening from 4 to 9 uh, in January. And, you know, we, we really couldn't do this without the support of everybody in the community. Um, I really wanted to thank Barhaven United for your long-term support. I think Barhaven United has been supporting Centre 507, you know, from our beginning uh, 30 years ago, or 40 years ago now. So, uh, thank you for your support. Um, 
If you want to learn more about Center 507, please go to our website. We will be updating it in uh, January. It's www.center507.org. Again, www.center507.org. Um, sign up for our newsletter while you're there. We try and send something out uh, every month. But, um, you know, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. Uh, I hope everyone at Barhaven United is, uh, is, is healthy. Whatever our gifts are this year, the gifts to our family, to our friends, to our church, to our community, may it be done so in love. Because whatever that gift is, the Spirit may work through it and bring amazing results. So let us just sit with that, sit with our gift, with our offering, and just take a few moments before we offer it to God in song and in prayer. Friends, please join me in prayer. In these days of waiting, O God, as Mary grew Jesus in her womb, so grow in us a spirit of generosity. Bring to birth within us a passion for justice and peace. As we share these gifts which you have entrusted to us, so may your dream for the world come closer to fulfillment. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Today this prayer is a litany prayer, so whenever you hear the phrase that I will say, Lord, hear our prayer, the response is, and in your love, answer. So let's try that. God, hear our prayer, and in your love, answer. Greater God, we come here to your sanctuary, seeking a rest for the stresses of the world, a place to gather our thoughts, a, a place to experience your voice and answer to our prayers. The noise of the world intrudes into our lives. We ask for peace, acceptance, and hope. Lord, hear our prayer, and in your love, answer. Loving creator in our families and our communities, we see people burdened with illness, loss, grief, sadness and isolation. Sometimes our efforts to reach out seem weak and unable to make a difference. We offer prayers on their behalf, but do not seem to know the right words to speak or the right time to listen. We ask for your guidance that we may reach out and include all those who are suffering and alone. 
Lord, hear our prayer, and in your love, answer. Living Christ who comes to us in love and acceptance of who we are, knowing that we are part of your mission in the world. You are the light of this weary, war-torn world, and as such, you are asking us to carry that light into all the shadowed corners so that those who are hiding in them in desperation might be freed from those chains. They too deserve to walk in your holy light, and we are called to be your guide in the new life you have given us. Lord, hear our prayer, and in your love, answer. Jesus, Savior and guide, we seek the compassion and acceptance for those who stand apart because of prejudice and ignorance, fear and hatred. In this, we are often swayed by others rather than standing true to your teachings, to your words. We say that we commit to supporting these persons, and yet we sometimes fail in our own fear and ignorance. We ask for your support and strength as we grow to know our brothers and sisters within God's family in God's world. We are all God's children, caring for each other as God cares for us. Lord, hear our prayer, and in your love, answer. Holy Spirit, bearer of God's love to our hearts, messenger of the Holy One, Touch our hearts that we may see and hear with acceptance and understanding, love and forgiveness. Fill us with the calm and peace that surpasses all understanding as we walk your ways, separate yet together in this given world. Help us with the healing needed to fulfill God's word word to us all. Lord, hear our prayer and in your love answer. May we leave here in renewed commitment to Jesus the Christ, the Creator God, and the Holy Spirit amid blessings as we walk your path. We gather these and all of our prayers thankful that we may turn to you as to our Mother, as our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
As we prepare to leave this time of worship, may we continue to follow the star, to welcome the stranger in, to offer safe harbor for all who seek it. May we know that we do not walk this path alone and that we are mighty because we walk together. And we walk together into whatever the future may bring. Let us go forth with the blessing of the one known to us is our creator, our sustainer, and our glorious redeemer. And let the people say, Amen. Amen.